Income Tax 2021-2022 Business Income Part Number 6 Get ready to get refunds to the max diving into Income Tax 2021-2022 most of this information can be found in Publication 334, Tax Guide for Small Business Tax Year 2021, Income Tax Formula, Line 1, Income. Subledger would be supplementing it, which would have, in essence, an income statement, income and expenses, expenses basically being deductions. The net then rolling in to Line 1, Income of the Income Tax Formula and Page 1 of the form 1040 we see here where we would have the schedule c rolling into the schedule one rolling into page one as we see here of the 1040 line number eight this is the schedule c the profit or loss from business basically an income statement so now we're looking at other income the following discussion explains how to treat other types of business income you may receive so obviously normally business income as we've seen in prior presentations could be fairly straightforward because you're thinking about the general thing that you do that you generate uh, income in and now we're getting into other types of incomes restricted property restricted property is property that has certain restrictions that affect its value so if we do work and we get paid in cash it's straightforward if we get paid in something else we have to value the thing that we got paid in and if there's a restriction on what we can do with something that would lower the value of it at least for the point in time that the restriction is in place and then if they've removed the restriction then that would increase the value so the question is how do i value it at the point in time the work was done and we got the property what happens if the restriction was removed so if you receive restricted stock or other property for services performed the fair market value of the property in excess of your cost is included in your income on schedule c when the restriction is lifted however you can choose to be taxed in the year you receive the property so you can take a look at the publication 525 so for more information if that's applicable to you gains and losses do not report on schedule c a gain or loss from the disposition of property that is neither stock uh, in trade nor held primarily for the sale to customers if it's held primarily for the sale to customers you would think then it would be it would be like the inventory that you're selling possibly part of the cost of goods sold so that means that it could be reported elsewhere if we're reporting something like property that uh, that was sold then we might use other forms and schedules that we've talked about in prior presentations remember as you're thinking of the schedule c it's kind of like one half of the full financial statements we've got the income statement but not the balance sheet so that means that that some things such as for example property although we don't record a balance sheet we might have a schedule for property planting equipment or depreciable assets that would then be tracking that asset and the related accumulated depreciation uh, related to it so if we had sales then it, it could be reported on some other reform other than the schedule c instead you must report these gains and losses on other forms for for more information you can see chapter three of the publication then we have the promissory notes report promissory notes and other evidence of debt issued to you in a sale or exchange of property that is stock in trade or held primarily uh, for sale to customers so that's basically you would think kind of like inventory so if it's uh, held primarily for sale to customers that's basically going to be kind of inventory and if you sold it for cash that's pretty straightforward but if you sold it for a promissory note then uh, that would depending on the method that you're using you would think that that would be income at the point in time that the sale was made at the point in time you earned it on basically an accrual method in general you report them at their stated principal amount minus any unstated interest when you receive them lost income payments if you reduce or stop your business activity report on schedule c any payments you receive for the lost income of your business from insurance or other so other sources report it on schedule c even if your business is inactive when you receive the payments and then we have damages you must include in gross income compensation you receive during the tax year as a result of any of the following injuries connected with your business patent infringement breach of contract or fiduciary duty antitrust injury 
economic injury, you may be entitled to a deduction. So obviously this would be a good side against the economic, against the income if it compensates you for actual economic injury. Your deduction is the smaller of the following amounts, the amount you receive or accrue for damages in the tax year, reduced by the amount you pay or incur in the tax year to recover that amount, your loss from the injury that you have not yet deducted. Then we have the punitive damages. Uh, you must also include punitive damages in income. So we have the kickbacks. If you receive any kickbacks, include them in your income on Schedule C. However, do not include them if you properly treat them as reduction of a related expense item, a capital expenditure, or cost of goods sold. So generally, you'd have if you get a kickback, you got to include the kickback typically, unless it's going to be matched up with one of these expense items, and it's more appropriate to do so. Recovery of items previously deducted. If you re if you recover a bad debt or any other item deducted in the previous year, so bad debt basically meaning that uh, you determined that you had an accounts receivable that was not going to be collectible, so you wrote it off uh, as bad debt. Now notice that would basically assume that if you got a benefit from it, from the bad debt, that you're on an accrual basis method, you wrote it off, and then someone comes back in and pays you. This person that you thought was dead, that was off the, you know, they haven't been able to contact him in five years, comes in and pays you, what you wrote off in a prior year is dad bad debt. Well, what do you do? Do you go back and fix the prior year return? Or possibly what we would like to do is not do that and fix it here going forward, possibly recording it as income. So if you receive a bad debt or any other item deduction in a previous year, include the recovery in income on Schedule C. However, if all or part of the deduction in earlier years uh, did not reduce your tax, you can exclude the part that did not reduce your tax. So then it gets a little confusing because now you got to think, did you get a benefit from the write-off in the prior year? If you did, and this is similar to like the, the state tax refund with the itemized deductions you might have like thought about uh, before. But if you, if you got a benefit, the deduction benefited you from a tax benefit in the prior year, then you should include it in income. But if it didn't, then you shouldn't is the general rule. So if you include part of the recovery from income, you must include with your return a computation showing how to figure the exclusion. So what if there's some part benefit that you got, then you got to whatever reasonable compensation you came up with, you got to show that. Exception for depreciation. This rule does not apply to depreciation. You recover depreciation using the rules explained next. So we got recap recapture of depreciation. In the following situation, you have to recapture the depreciation deduction. This means you include in income part or all of the depreciation you deducted in previous years. So depreciation is a is an interesting topic here because remember from an accounting standpoint, you basically take uh, depreciation allocating the cost over the useful life of the machinery and equipment that you have instead of deducting that in year one. But on the tax side, we often intentionally, they often intentionally front load the depreciation that you're going to be taking. So that means you get a lot more depreciation in the first years. And what that leads to, of course, is that if you sell the property, then you're going to have a gain because the, the fact that you have depreciation is going to lower the basis of the property. So you're getting a benefit, a tax write off from the depreciation. So when you sell it, then you're more likely to have a gain uh, when you sell it. And so then the question is, well, you took a deduction in the past and now you've got uh, and now you're now you're selling it and it and actually the value of the property didn't really go down so that's where you come up with this uh, recapture of the depreciation concept that has to come into play a uh, listed property if your business use if your business use a listed property explained in chapter 8 under depreciation falls into 50% or less in a tax year after the tax year you place the property in service you may have to recapture part of the depreciation deduction you do this by including in income uh, on schedule C part of the depreciation you deducted in previous years. You can use part number four of form 4797 to figure the amount to include in Schedule C. For more information, see what is business use requirement in Chapter 5 of Publication 946. So you could take a look at that for to dive into this in more detail. That chapter explains how to determine whether property is used more than 50% in, uh, in business, in your business. Section 179 property. Now, Section 179 
is usually one of the things that the tax code will use to kind of accelerate the depreciation that you could take in your one generally when you purchase the property which of course leads to over depreciating from an accounting standpoint which would lead to the fact that if you sold the property you would most likely have a gain because you now have a lower adjusted basis so so if you take a section 179 deduction explained in chapter 8 under depreciation for an asset and before the end of the assets recovery period the percentage of business use drops to 50 percent or less you must recapture part of the section 179 deduction so now you're talking about business versus personal use it drops under and and so now you got to now you got to basically a problem with the deduction that was taken under the 179 deduction which can be of course quite significant you do this by including in income on schedule c part of the deduction you took use part number four of form 4797 to figure the amount to include in schedule c you can see chapter two of publication 946 in that case sale or exchange of depreciable property so sale now you're going to sell the property and like i say when you sell the property because of the accelerated depreciation it's likely that you'll have a gain so then when you have the gain that should kind of net out you would think then against the accelerated expenses that you were able to take the deductions you were able to take for depreciation because that lowered the basis or adjusted cost in essence of the property so if you sell or exchange depreciable property at a gain you may have to treat all or part of the gain due to depreciation as ordinary income so this is the issue this is where it comes so you would think it would all work itself out because you're saying okay i got a depreciation in the early years because the tax code incentivized that and then i sold the property but because i had a lower basis due to the depreciation i took the book value in essence from an accounting standpoint or adjusted basis from the stock from the tax standpoint is lower that means that i had a gain so it kind of washes out i got a deduction prior year i've got to record income in the following year but what if you have this difference in tax rates then that causes problems if you got capital gains rates versus ordinary income rates that can cause a problem because if the deduction was taken uh, using against the ordinary income rates then you would be incentivizing people to kind of cheat the system by basically purchasing stuff getting a deduction on ordinary income rates and then selling it and and getting the income that they have to record but it's recorded at the favorable capital gains rates and that would be you know a problem so that's when it gets kind of messy so you fig you figure the income due to depreciation recapture in part three of form 4797 so for more information on that you can see chapter four of publication 544.